Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of my course vlogs. And we're out here at the beautiful Desert Willow Mountain View course this time. If you want to see the Firecliff course, it's available on the channel. Link is in the description below. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you back here week after week. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It lets me know you're out there and really does help the video. We'll see you out there on the first hole. A par four straight into the morning sun. Here we go. Mountain View is going to start on the south side of the property here at Desert Willow and there's lots of room around this golf course for some future resort expansions. I would believe that in the coming years we're going to see more and more fill in that empty desert space. But for now we just have some beautiful pristine golf with nothing around you. Bunkers surround left and right here on the first. That was a medium sized par 4, plays about 420 yards from the tips. Thread those bunkers and you're going to come into a narrowing green here as the back hole location is in the smallest little section of green that there is. Now we were hoping that we could see this. We had four sets of eyeballs on it and I saw it just go a little left down in the corridor here and it was sitting on top of the fairway bunker. A clean shot to the green, only 130 yards to that back hole location. And here with my new wedges, the 50 degree gap wedge goes about 130. Well, I'd say right on the button 130. A nice little four footer for birdie to start the day. And that's always a nice way to get out of the car. Number two here, we're going to be going straight back into the sun once again, so straight towards the east, but it's a little bit different of a par four. Rising up into this fairway and dropping down a little bit more into the green, there's bunkers left and right once again off the tee, but this fairway gets very, very narrow after those bunkers, so decisions off the tee need to be made as driver might not be the play if you can hit it long down there. A nice small green protected on all sides by some sand. There is some room to miss out there though. Now this is just a two iron to get it down into play. A little turnover draw as my specialty here with the club. And it just barely caught the right edge of the rough here. Nothing to worry about in the overseeded rye. This ball sits up just fine in the rough. And 150 yards is the distance of my new pitching wedge and left it just underneath the hole. Another 15 footer here for birdie. After f two par fours in a row straight into that morning sun, we're finally going to turn to the right and have a little reprieve. You can finally see some green grass out in front of you, but this one is no chore. 450 yards from the tips, this is easily the most difficult hole on the golf course, not just needing that number one handicap to tell you so. The bunker on the right is a little bit elevated up on a hill, as most of these fairways are kind of surrounded by funneling rough to the left and the right. So if you miss a little left or a little right, it tends to bounce your ball down. Now this green does arc over a big drop off to the right, so any back right hole location is very tough to get to. Now just a very lazy swing here with the driver. I just wasn't comfortable with it off this tee shot. It just didn't look right down there. And I uh, just sprayed it off to the right over here onto the hill in between the third and fourth hole. I had no look at the green that was over those red bushes in front of me, but I knew I had to get a club to get it up and over the bushes. So I was just happy to send this about 20 yards short of the green, looking to get up and down, but I just had to chip it over this little finger of a bunker here, just enough to not let me chip it close. But these greens are perfect and every single putt looks like it might go in. I mean, there, you couldn't ask for better putting surfaces than you have out here at Desert Willow. Both golf courses are always in tip top shape. Now this fourth hole, it's the fourth par four in a row to start this golf course. We're gonna see a little bit of variety after this hole. The waste bunker down the right is gonna serve as your target off the tee as it makes most of this fairway blind from the tee. 
So make sure you avoid that left hand bunker as well. This is a shorter par four, so you might not need driver off the tee, and it's a quite inviting green here. It's a little bit flatter than most out here on the Mountain View course. Another comfortable two iron for me off the tee. I've found this club once again. I did lose it for a couple months and had no confidence in it, but just a little bit of work and we were able to put it right back in play off the tee. A comfortable gap wedge to this hole location. Another one perfectly pin high and a makeable 10 footer here for birdie. But it doesn't just wasn't meant to be. But I know that this is going to be one of those rounds to remember. I'm flushing it, and all I got to do is get a couple putts to drop. Here, the beautiful par 3 fifth hole. Plays 225 yards all the way down the hill from the back tips. And to that front hole location, we get a little bit of a reprieve. Only 205. And luckily, that's pretty much a driving range 6 iron for me. That's the number I always have in my head, so nothing different here, and I flush this one pin high. A nice 10-footer again for another birdie look. Ooh, yeah, you heard my playing partner there. That was to secure the first match of our little game we were playing there. 20 bucks in the pocket is always nice to have right out of the gate. The sixth hole here, I mean, 475 yards and it's a par five. Time to take advantage. Waste bunkers down the right will protect any drives from going into the water. So aim it to those bunkers down the left to completely avoid losing any of your golf balls down the right side. Now you'll see coming into the green why this is really a par five and gonna play a par five for most golfers playing here. The, gr the green is surrounded all the way in front and to the left by that river. And those rock faces jump up about three to four feet in front making this green look elevated from the fairway. Now I knew the ball would cut, it went right off of the third hole, and so I aimed way off to the left, just allowing that ball to go, down the middle it went, and just barely trickled here into the rough. A comfortable 7-iron, that's my 190 club, just looking for the middle of the green here with this hole location, and trying for the easy 2-putt birdie. I mean, I would love the eagle, but from that distance away, we're just looking to hit the green. That's all I'm really ever looking to do on par 5s. In the end, that wasn't a bad lag putt, as this putt for birdie is right underneath the hole. A simple four-footer straight up and in. You want to make sure that you leave your lag putts on the proper side of the hole, so even if they're a little bit further away, they're still very makeable. The seventh hole, we're finally back to another par four. 390 yards, and this one's going to be arcing around that trio of bunkers on the left-hand side a little bit uphill to those bunkers and then back down to the green about two or three yards. Not much to deal with here, just some basic rolling terrain out here in the desert. A beautiful green here surrounded on all sides by trouble and that back left hole location is sitting up on a little shelf. Now you can see how beautiful this morning is out here in the Coachella Valley. Oh my God, this is just a beautiful destination to play some golf. About two hours from LA and oh, a world away. Absolutely a world away. Now, I got so lucky with my ball being in the bunker. A perfect lie in the bottom of the bunker allowed me to chip a pitching wedge out of it right to what I thought was the middle of the green, but ultimately it was four feet under the hole for birdie. I just can't get that one to drop though. And it's just going to be a nice, comfy tap-in par as we're on to the next par three. 180 yards to the middle of the green. We got another front hole location on this par three. Going to be knocking this one down to about 165 yards. 
which is just a big nine iron for me, which I should leave just hopefully underneath the hole. Another one, six feet under the hole. Not gonna let this one go. Knock it off. Got you, buddy. And the same guy that was praising me is now pissed because he's my opponent. Oh, you gotta love games. Now, the par five ninth here is a very cool par five, as off the tee, you have plenty of room out there to hit a driver as the fairway runs out at about 350 yards. It's about 295 to 300 to carry the bunkers on the left, and about 350 here to this river crossing. Then we're gonna have plenty more hole to deal with here, as this is a brutally long par five heading up the hill all the way to the green. Man, this green is pitched way up there on the hill and those bunkers down on the right and left are nowhere that you wanna be. Trying to play another cut right off of those fairway bunkers but this one decided to go almost stick straight right over the bunkers allowing me to have this awkward downhill lie. Really just try to make sure I kept my weight over my front foot during impact and just let your weight go after that. Run it on out. Make sure you don't hurt yourself on those kind of lies. And ultimately, I mean, I hit another one pin high just off the green and I had a look at it from the fringe, but it launched off the fringe out here to about six feet past the hole for birdie. Well, that's nine holes down. We'll see you next week for the back nine. Later.